Hey everyone, Pastor Roger here. I am in the Little Critters Room here at Centennial Road Church. Why? Because I want to promote next Sunday, Father's Day. We are permitted to gather in person. I'm so excited. Well, of course, we will still offer our online service, but Brockville and area, we get to gather together in person. Now, we'll do the same thing we've done uh, when we've been able to do that. 15% capacity, masks, hand sanitizer, contact tracing, physical distancing. But what we want you to do is register through our website, centennialroad.com, just to make sure that uh, you get that seat. If nine o'clock fills up super fast, well, then there's probably gonna be room at 10.30. Speaking of Father's Day, we are offering this challenge to you. Nominate your dad for any financial gift and C Road will match it up to $10 per gift for this charity. It's the First Nations Child and Family Caring Society. You can check them out at the website on the screen. Enjoy the service and thanks for joining us.
Well, welcome everyone. Thanks so much for tuning in to this last part in our five part series from the book of James that we've called the James Variant. And as we wind up this series, we are so excited to share with you a little bit more about the idea of prayer. Now, here's the thing about the Bible before we get into all of this regarding James. Every time you read the Bible, whether it's something familiar or something new, there's always something fresh right there in front of you that you can have access to and make use of. So what I'm gonna encourage you to do is continue to read, to study, because even in this James series, we haven't been able to cover everything that the book of James talks about, just little snippets of each single chapter. And today we're gonna focus all on chapter five and just a part of chapter five which is gonna be a little bit awesome. We're gonna be talking about prayer. Now we're gonna not be able to do it in a really exhaustive setting. So what I want you to do is, in addition to kind of tuning in on this version of this talk, I want you to also uh, look back at a, a series that we did back in the fall of 2020 called Talking to Walls. It was a four part series on prayer itself and it was massive in what we were able to do and dig into with prayer in uh, multiple talks as opposed to just one that you're getting here today. We're going to be talking about prayer, like I said, and to start, I want to share a moment with you in my lifetime about prayer. Prayer isn't something that I've always loved and enjoyed. It's something that I've struggled with. I remember in 1993, my Aunt Hilda was diagnosed for the second time with cancer. And so what we did as followers of Jesus and extended family, we did what we thought we were supposed to do. We gathered everybody together. We prayed for her. We asked God to heal. And guess what? It didn't happen, at least not in the way that we thought. My aunt still passed away from this terrible, debilitating disease called cancer. And so it left a lot of us confused. And to be honest with you, there's still some friction and tension in our extended family. Some people were confused about why it didn't happen and accused other people of different things. And it just created relational tension and strife. So I, I share that with you to say this. I understand that prayer is loaded. It's complicated and it can be really confusing. So what we're gonna do over the next few moments is just dive into a portion of James and see what we can learn and discover together because there are three cool ideas that I believe he outlines for us that might help us understand what prayer is all about. If you got a Bible with you, I wanna invite you to turn with me to the book of James chapter five. I'll be starting to read in verse 13 and all the way through and including verse 18. Are any of you suffering hardships? You should pray. Are any of you happy? You should sing praises. Are any of you sick? You should call for the elders of the church to come and pray over you, anointing you with oil in the name of the Lord. Such a prayer offered in faith will heal the sick and the Lord will make you well. And if you have committed any sins, you will be forgiven. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. Elijah was a, was a human as we are. And yet when he prayed earnestly that no rain would fall, none fell for three and a half years. Then when he prayed again, the sky sent down rain and the earth began to yield its crops. Lots to say there, lots to unpack. Like I said, three ideas that I wanna share with you today from that text. So let's dive in right to that first idea. Prayer is the gateway to hope. Verse 13 outlines this for us. He, he, James starts this section saying like, if anybody is experiencing hardships, you should pray. If anybody's happy, you should sing praises. What does that look like and what does that mean? The truth is life isn't easy, it's challenging. You might have been experiencing something right now that is super challenging. Maybe it's a health diagnosis, maybe it's a, a relational catastrophe of some kind that you're walking through. Maybe it's just confusion about the future and the present and what life is gonna look like. Maybe you're struggling with your decision on whether to vaccinate or not vaccinate. Whatever your hardship is ex you're experiencing right now, we are invited to pray. Now, as an older kind of elementary aged school child, I remember being taught about fire. I was taught that if I myself was ever caught on fire, I needed to do three things, stop, drop, and roll. That's what I needed to do, not run away, not scream, stop what I was doing, drop down to the ground and roll, and that would extinguish the fire. Now, thankfully, I've never had to put that into practice. I've never been on fire. Now, I have when I've been playing sports, of course, I've been on fire, so to speak, but not literally on fire. 
here's what I want us to do. When we think about this particular verse in James, I want us to take an adaptation of what I just shared with you. I want us to stop, to drop, take a posture of prayer and pray. Stop, drop and pray. What do you do when you are faced with a high hardship? What's your first go-to? Is it to grab a snack? Is it to call a friend? Is it to complain? Is it to cry? Is it to do something else outside of prayer? I know I have been guilty of that. But James is reminding us, whenever we're facing a challenge, it's an opportunity for us to pray. And here's why we want to pray. Because pray is, prayer is the gateway to hope. Jesus is the source of hope for today and for tomorrow. Not just about our eternal security, but about right now, whatever we are facing, Jesus is that source. And it's through prayer that we can begin to connect with his heart, his willingness, his, his understanding of what we're going through in the moment. He's gonna give us insight and clarity and peace and patience and strength and everything that we need to survive that hardship that we are in. And even with my Aunt Hilda, that's exactly what happened. She provided for us, God provided for us, what we needed in that moment. A sense of peace and prayer and hopefulness and understanding, even amidst the hardship that we are facing right then. And that's what he promises to continue to do for us right now here today, is give us what we need to survive the hardship that we're in. But here's the thing about prayer, and here's the thing about praise. They aren't about us. They're not about us in any way, shape, or form. They are all about God. And here's where we can kind of get confused sometimes. We can let our personal preferences get in the way of our actual spiritual growth and formation with Jesus. Take, for example, praise. You and I probably have different preferences on what we enjoy in terms of praise, worship, music. Maybe, maybe some of you like country. I know you love country music. It is not my favorite. Some of you might like rap or classical or jazz or whatever it is. All of those things are amazing. That's the way that God has wired you to be uniquely you, and that is awesome. But guess what? When we worship God, it's actually not about us. It's not about our personal preference. When we pray, it's not about our personal preference. It's not about having the things we want answered, answered. It's about getting to know God. It's about bringing honor to Him. It's about worshiping Him and praising Him and loving Him through these acts of engagement in our spiritual lives, prayer and praise. So when we're facing a hardship or when we have the opportunity to worship together, I want you to replay that kind of fire mentality in your mind. Stop, drop, and pray, or stop, drop, and praise, whatever you happen to be in. But that's not the only idea that James invites us into with this text. The second big idea is that prayer is the gateway to freedom. Prayer is the gateway to freedom. Some of, sometimes we get confused with this one as well. We think that so many other things are gonna grant us the freedom that we desire. Maybe it's gonna be more resources in terms of finances, or less travel restrictions or something else that's gonna bring us the layer of freedom that we crave. No, it's actually Jesus that's gonna bring us the layer of consistent, unending freedom that you and I crave. Here's the thing about freedom. There's a difference between the darkness and the light. Maybe you've happened, happened to uh, uh, have this happen to you in some way, shape or form. You, you woke up in the middle of the night and you were looking for something, but because you were in the dark, you kind of stumbled around and, and you're trying to find your way forward. It's challenging to see things when you are shrouded in darkness. However, if you have a little bit of light, like on a flashlight, a moonlight, a nightlight, whatever it happens to be, you'll, you have the opportunity to be able to see right through that hardship or that thing that you're looking for. That's the difference between darkness and light. When we are living in darkness, we can't see. When we're living in the light, things become clear to us. In our whole lives, the things that we keep hidden, that's, that's a representative of, of being in darkness. Instead of hiding things, we're invited to bring them into the light by, by giving them to Jesus and asking him to free us from this. Well, that could be our, our addictions, that could be our thought life, that could be any number of different things that we're struggling with in the moment. If we bring those to Jesus, he's gonna provide us freedom from our brokenness. He's gonna heal that and allow us to experience life to the full the way it was intended to be lived right here on earth today. But not only that, James 
takes it to another level. He says, confess your sins to one another. Now, what does that mean? I am not saying that on a Sunday or a Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday, whatever day you happen to gather together with a group of friends, that you confess your sins or your brokenness to each other. Here's what I think it means. I think it means we need to be aware that all of us are broken. Every single one of us. We're broken, we're marred, we're imperfect. And because of that, we all need Jesus. And that's what we have in common. Where is our need for Jesus? Before this global pandemic and before I've had the privilege of being your lead pastor here at Sea Road, I was living with my family in the city of Red Deer in, in central Alberta region. And every second Friday, we would have a cluster of families come to our house. We'd have potluck, barbecue, whatever style of food we were into in the moment. We'd have a time of a prayer together, a time of Bible study together. And we'd just get to know one another and live life together as a cluster of families. I've got so many rich memories from that time of those individuals and, and sharing with one another. One stands out in particular. There was a moment where one of our young couples shared openly and honestly with their brokenness. They had lost a couple of children to miscarriages and we wept with them as a, as a community. We cried with them. We, we sat with them in the ashes. We felt their pain. We identified with them. We loved them. We cared for them right through those moments. And God gave them a gift later on where they're able to conceive another child and carry to term. And that little guy is amazing. And we were able to celebrate with them. That's what it looks like to confess our sins, our brokenness with, with one another. It's whatever's in the darkness, taking that out of the darkness, bringing it into the light and, and having it have less control and power and influence over us because it's no longer hidden. It doesn't matter as much. It doesn't have that intimidation factor around us. The cool thing is, is that you and I have the opportunity to do that with Jesus every moment of every day. We can bring ourselves into the light. We can step into them. He says to us in the Bible that he is the light of the world. Every time we move closer to Jesus, everything about who we are gets brought into the light and the light is healing. The light, it gives us purpose and joy and so much more. It brings us meaning. Prayer is the gateway to freedom. And when we connect with Jesus through prayer, we can embrace the freedom that he has in mind for you and I, and we can live from that space moving forward. Now, the third big idea that we need to highlight from this section of text is that prayer is the gateway to power. James concludes this section in verses 17 and 18 with outlining this story that took place in the, in the Old Testament portion of the Bible. It's this guy named Elijah, and he's praying that no rain would fall on the land. And for three and a half years, no rain falls on the land. That's, that's a big, audacious prayer that he prays. And then he prays a little bit later that rain would fall, and then rain actually starts falling. Sometimes we can read a story like this and be like, oh my goodness, this guy, Elijah, he was the bomb. He was amazing. He must be the source of power. That's not true. Now, Elijah was a, a God-fearing man. He was somebody that was worth looking up to and learning from, but he was not the source of power. God is the source of power. See, today in our society, in North American mentality, Canadian mentality, we think this lie that we can figure things out all on our own. And we simply can't do that. We're not creative enough. We're not wise enough. We're not mature enough. There's so many things that you and I are missing. We aren't the source of power. We aren't the source of the answer to the questions that we crave. Now it's true, God has given us amazing abilities and gifts and talents and we have to put them into practice, but who is the giver of all of that stuff? It's God, it's not us. We aren't to worship ourselves, we are to worship God. And it, prayer kind of helps us right size our mentality as to where the true source of power lies. Not in our own minds, not in our own hearts, not in our own hands. It's in Jesus, the true source of power. Those are the three big ideas that I believe that James is trying to communicate with us through this portion of his letter. And here's what it means for us today, right now. We are gonna pray. We're gonna stop, drop, and pray. Wherever we are, whatever we happen to be doing, we're gonna stop, drop, and pray. We're gonna take a posture of prayer and we're gonna pray for healing in three different ways. Physical healing, emotional healing, and spiritual healing. I know that some of you are struggling right now with a diagnosis that you didn't plan for. 
we want to pray specifically for you. And as we go to a time of prayer, what I want you to do is I want you to physically put the hand of yourself on that body part or that area of, of, of yourself, your anatomy that is struggling with pain. Maybe it's something, uh, a debilitating disease or just debilitating pain of some kind. I want you to put your hand on that space and we're going to collectively join together. Even though we're not in the same space, we're going to join together and pray specifically for you through your pain and through your sickness and through your illness. Because prayer is powerful. It's the gateway to hope. It's the gateway to freedom. And we're going to be participating in that. We're also going to pray for those of you who are struggling with an emotional pain of some kind right now. Maybe it's brokenness in your home relationships between husband and wife or, or parents and children and vice versa, extended family, relational collateral damage, whatever is going on, we're going to pray for your emotional pain right now. Maybe your coworkers have been really, really difficult to get along with during the duration of time that you've been employed wherever you're employed. We're going to pray for you for that pain, for that situation that you're experiencing right now. And for some of us, we need spiritual healing. We do not yet know Jesus. And so we're going to pray for you as well. So wherever that source of pain is in your self, your anatomy, I want to invite you right now to put your hand on that space. For me, it's my heart. I'm going to pray for my heart. We're going to pray for you and whatever you are working through. Would you join me in prayer? Father, I thank you that we have the opportunity to connect with you in prayer. Prayer is powerful. It's the gateway to hope. It's the gateway to freedom. It's the gateway to power. You are the source of hope and life in this world and in the next. And God, I pray right now that you would comfort each one of us. Lord, I know that there are many of us right now who are suffering from debilitating illnesses or pain, whether that is uh, working through something physical in nature or something more emotional in nature and so god i pray by the power of the holy spirit and in the name of jesus that you would bring freedom and healing from that pain that you would reduce suffering that you would reduce the symptoms that we're experiencing so that we can be the witness that you need us to be of hope light and love right where you've placed us in our families our workplaces our environments our neighborhoods or all of those spaces God, I know that there's many of us that are struggling with some emotional pain. Maybe it's a level of anxiety, unlike any other that we've experienced right now. Maybe it is relational brokenness of some kind. And so Jesus, I ask that you would meet those individuals in their hearts and in their minds, wherever those battles are taking place, and that you would relieve the anxiety, relieve the anger, the frustration, that you would replace it with hope and peace and life and joy and kindness and gentleness and self-control. God, that you would allow us to experience your freedom from an emotional perspective. And Jesus, if there's anybody that is engaging with us today and they do not yet know you, they need freedom on a spiritual level. They need freedom, they need healing on a spiritual level. And so I pray, God, that today you would remind them or tell them for the very first time how much they matter to you. God, I pray that you would heal their hearts and their souls, that you'd, you'd forgive them of their sins, cover over their brokenness and give them the life that you so desperately want all of us to taste on this side of eternity. Lord, we trust and we know that you are the God that can move mountains. And so we ask you to move those things physically, emotionally, and spiritually, wherever we need breakthroughs. We believe a breakthrough is coming and we trust you. And so we hang on to you and we pray to you because we want to get to know you and we want to understand what you're all about. Father, thank you for loving us. We pray this all in your name. Amen. Centennial Road Church, it has been our privilege and our honor to be able to serve you these past four years as a family, uh, myself, Hannah, Henry, and Junia. And we're so grateful for every moment we've had with you, the highs, the lows, everything in between. We're grateful to have been um, grafted into this family here to be able to praise Jesus together and, and to grow closer to him. So as we go, we just want to sing this blessing over you. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace.
Jesus, thank you for this family. Lord, you know our hearts and you know exactly what this family means to us. So selfishly, Lord, on behalf of the Bower Sox, we, we just pray over our family. We just pray blessings and grace and joy and peace and triumph and victory. We pray your favor be upon them, generations after them. Thank you that we are united in Christ. Thank you for the time we've got to share together. Thank you that we get the privilege of serving alongside our brothers and sisters here. And thank you that goodbye is never goodbye in the kingdom of God. Lord, we praise you for this church. We praise you for the good you do through us and in us. And Jesus, may your presence go before us and behind us and beside us, all around us. You are with us. And even in our weeping and rejoicing, you are for us. no matter what the enemy tries to do. You are victorious. Let's sing that one more time together. Just may his presence. May his presence go before you and behind you and beside you. Justin and Hannah, thank you so much for sharing that song, that worshipful presence with us as a church community. And as this is your last Sunday serving with us on staff, I just wanna say how much I love you. I appreciate you. I notice you, I value you. And I'm so excited for everything that God has in store for you in this next journey that he has you on. Going back to Rochester area, being close to friends and family, leading a church. And we, as a church community, as a board, as a staff, we just want you to know that we're gonna miss you and we love you. And so as we send you out, it's bittersweet because we're excited for you, but we wish we could keep you all to ourselves. So thank you so much for being a part of our community and know how much we deeply love and appreciate you. Thankful that we're a little bit closer together. Like you're still staying in our geographical region, even though internationally, but hey, we're not gonna be able to see you every day, but we sure do look forward to those future visits. We love you and take care as God leads you forward. Hey, thanks again for joining us. So glad you did. Brockville and area people, I hope you've checked your mailbox and you have received your In The Loop Volume 2. We've got all kinds of great news in there. Be sure to check your mailbox. If you haven't received it, give the church a call and we will update your records to make sure you get it. Also want to say thanks so much for your faithfulness in giving. What you do, how you contribute, helps the ministry through Centennial Road Church. Be in prayer for things like the Outpost Cafe in Prescott. 
Uh, check out our groups page as well. Maybe there's something you can dial into. We are offering Alpha once again this semester. So maybe if you're investigating Christianity, that is the vehicle for you. Again, thanks so much for joining us. Have a great week. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Bye for now.